Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video we're going to be discussing some shop failures that have occurred and hopefully haven't occurred to any one of you out there, but of course this does happen. Um, this new video series I'll be continuing. If you guys have any content that you'd like me to discuss, please feel free to share it with me. Uh, you'll see my contact information at the beginning of the video and at the end. We'll jump right in and cover exactly what's going on right here. Today in this video, we're going to be taking a look at something a lot different than what I usually post on my channel, but I feel this is long overdue, and these are going to be a video series that I'll be working with over time uh, as I find them, and they are shop failures in real time of electronics for CNC or other areas. And the reason I'm doing this is to highlight the points of safety I've discussed in other videos. Uh, I'm going to try to keep this am as ambiguous as possible. I'm not here to degrade anyone, but we are here to learn from others' mistakes, which can potentially be fatal, especially with what we're about to see in this video. Um, I cannot tell you uh, how disappointed I am to see a video like this posted for a couple reasons. First of all, I'll give you the outline of what we're looking at. We've got a grinder here. You can see he's apparently working with a knife. But over here, if you look, <clears throat> he's working with what appears to be an HYVFD or one similar to that. Many of them come from overseas. They're, they're labeled under different pretenses for an overseas company. And again, they're all essentially the same. But again, the internal structures of these units all can vary depending upon the factory that's creating them. We all know that. What we have here is this gentleman powering this grinder with this VFD. And this VFD is going to explode. Now, it's a small explosion because the capacitors are, of course, housed internally. What's more appalling is the fact that this individual, disregarding his own safety, disregarding anyone's safety in the shop, also then decides to work on the VFD trying to correct the issue, and we get the same outcome for a second time. So I'm going to try to keep this video as short as possible. Once again, there is a lot to discuss here. So I'm going to hit play, show you guys exactly what's going on. Uh, there is music in the background, so I did mute the video, so there's no real noise. But we can plainly see exactly what's going on with uh, what actually is done. So I'm going to hit play now. We'll just pay attention to the VFD. There you go. There's the immediate capacitor pop. And this individual then goes back. And now he's on his workbench. And guys, just to highlight this, when we see something like this, and you can see the capacitor is basically shot, first of all, why anyone would try to disassemble this unit is terrifying to me. These are three-phase output. You can see he's got his Weller soldering iron here. If one of these capacitors is still charged, this individual could be lethally shocked to death. And we don't know what time frame went on to discharge the capacitor. So, again, this is a complete disregard or complete ignorance to safety. Not only for him, potentially his family, but also other individuals in the shop. So, again, we've got to be very careful with this. And truth be told, this is really what warranties are to be used for in the event something like this happens. Now, of course, we don't know the backstory of why this happened when it actually popped the unit but let's say it wasn't the end user's fault naturally we just make a warranty claim and we're good as I hit play here you'll see him he's reviewing everything see our MOSFETs everything here he's starting to begin soldering and one thing I want to point out right now is when you're working on circuit boards guys you should always be using flux not that he should be working on this at all once again I want to make that point explicitly clear Regarding your background in electronics, whoever you may be, if you're watching this video, I do not recommend ever working on a three-phase output VFD. Um, again, this individual is doing this, not only soldering uh, in terms of trying to repair the unit, but he's not using the proper materials in terms of tooling, and I consider flux a proper tooling to use with solder to do these joints correctly if he was to repair them at all, which again, I don't recommend. But we can see what he's actually doing here. Once again, replacing what he feels the problem is.
And guys, this is something I see done online a lot, and this is something I wanted to point out explicitly. You see guys handling solder where they're using the solder to basically bulb up on the tip. And this is why I've discussed in many previous videos why I use the carryover method. Doing it this way, you're essentially just heating this part. Whatever component he's heating here, he is just essentially drawing more and more heat to that component, regardless of that he's performing a repair. But what he's essentially trying to do is formulate the solder to bead. And why the solder is not beading is because he's not using flux. Many of you experienced this and have seen this in previous videos where I've highlighted the fact that when you have solder in the absence of the proper amount of flux, you will always get a bead. And it's not a sticky bead in that it will stick to the component you're trying to solder, whereas it basically just formulates a circle or it becomes a puddle and it will not stick to the component. Therefore, what ends up happening by the end user is they continuously can perform heating on the component they're trying to solder, melting more and more solder, and they get nowhere. You'll see that done right here. He's going to leave heat there for as long as possible, and he just keeps transferring more and more heat to these components. This is not the way to solder, guys. Now it appears, of course, he's fast-forwarding the video to go to reassemble the unit. Seeing if I can see if that's an HY. I believe it is. I believe that's an HY insignia right there. One thing I want to point out immediately, another point, you can see there's a lot of metal in there as far as heat sinking. Um, we don't know what kind of bridge formats that we have as far as clearance. When he's going to screw things together, if he doesn't get this exact, you're going to find that you can have a dead short. And rather than discuss that, you'll see that happen when he goes to cycle the unit on again. You'll see this all come into play. But I want to continuously let you know throughout the video, this is an example of exactly what not to do. You guys should not be trying to fix these units yourself. Um, again, there's no reason to put you, your family, or anyone else in harm's way by working on a component like this, regardless of what you feel your electronic experience is. There's a point where you pull yourself back. You know, many times I know mentally it's easy to say, hey, you know, I can fix that. But what if a mistake happens? Right now his hand is in there. Once again, he was right near the capacitors as he was working with this. If that other capacitor he touched was not properly discharged, I'll say it again, he could be instantly shocked. And God only knows if it's enough to kill him. And I, it's been recorded many times that it's happened. Be very careful. You see he's trying to fish all the wires in now, trying to get everything as clean as possible. Just going to fast forward this a little bit. Now he's going to get it back on the bench. I'm just fast forwarding it. You see he's connecting everything. And now we can see exactly what's happened from the fruit of the labor that uh, he tried to put in. Now I'm assuming he went to go and switch on the socket that he just plugged in. Many of you already will find, and I've discussed this with many guys that are novice have not used uh, a VFD before, is that naturally these units do not come 
with an outlet or a power cable. So you can see he attached a power cable right there to an extension cord. And then, of course, he's got that most likely wired to his socket where he's going to turn it on as far as being a switch to operate it. Uh, if, again, you're building your own system and you're working with a VFD the first time, you will require your own double shielded power cord and best practice. And, of course, a proper breaker and wall outlet to cycle the unit on and off. You do not want the unit on all the time. Right there, right there, we turn it on again. You can see that slight pop. I'll go back one more time. There's a spark. Let's see. Come back. Watch it one more time. I'll try to pause it. Right there. So there's the first instance that we can see something is going on. Right there, there's the spark jump. At that point, you would have thought that the individual would have looked at that. If he did see it, I don't know if he didn't. I'm sure he heard something in the shop. At that point, you would have thought he would have disconnected the unit. That's not the case. Okay, so everything here appears to be working correctly, at least in his eyes. He's changing out his digital interface. He's beginning the programming process. It's going to fast forward it a little bit. There we go. Boom. There we go again. Wind it a little bit. Watch the whole thing again. There you go. So, not only was it unsafe, not only was it a complete waste of time to try to work on the unit himself, once again, thank God he didn't get hurt. And I hope that you guys have learned something from this. Once again, regardless of who you buy from, regardless of what components you're working with, especially a VFD, which again it stands for Variable Frequency Drive. It is a three-phase output unit. You do not want to be jolted by that at all, guys. That is lethal voltage. And what we're seeing here. Once again, I hope many of you have learned from as what not to do. There is nothing worth your life or getting hurt for, or for that matter, potentially hurting anyone else. So, like I said, I will keep this series going. I want to keep it, once again, as ambiguous as possible as far as not releasing anyone. Uh, it, not intentionally anyways. This was not a beatdown video. But again, just so everybody here can learn, especially guys that are just getting involved with this that feel, you know, they have some type of electrical knowledge from general wiring and best practice with homes. I hear this a lot. And they think that's going to carry over to industrial units like this. Be careful, guys. Once again, if you'd like to contact me for consultations, quotes, anything CNC related, message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. You, you'll see my contact information in the beginning of the video and at the end. You can also contact me through my eBay store. Thank you all for your support, guys. Be careful. Take care.